Welcome back. Well, Liverpool absolutely tore Spartak Moscow apart at Anfield. They scored a total of 23 goals in this Champions League group. Only PSG scored more in the group phase of the competition. And by the way, the defeat for Spartak Moscow is the heaviest a Russian side has ever suffered in European competition. So uh, a watershed night for them. It perhaps doesn't augur well for World Cup next year, but that's for another day. Eamon, um, a, a fantastic performance from yeah. Liverpool. We talked beforehand about all the attacking talent they have in the team, and we saw them at their best tonight. We did, yeah. I think we have to factor in their opponents being sure. gutless and clueless, really. It's hard to believe, having been professional players, that you could die without pulling up any fight and be humiliated like that. But uh, that's not taken a lot away from Liverpool because the goals were, you know, very, very good. The movement was great, passing and the finishing. Uh, so it was an outstanding night for Liverpool. You have to bury these teams uh, if they come there in that sort of fashion. Uh, but it still takes a bit of doing. It underlines Liverpool's strength uh, and their weakness. It wasn't tested, uh, which is, of course, their defence. It just, I would think, for you know anybody, they've got forward players that are better than Manchester United, than Arsenal. They've got pe people with pace, uh, all score goals. Uh, Coutinho, Mane, Salah, Firmino. I mean, nobody else in the Premier League has that kind of talent, attacking talent. And yet, they're, you know, they're not going to win because of what's going on with the back four, with the, the two goalkeepers are no good. But on the night, uh, they did the job uh, ruthlessly and uh, very effectively. Damien, what did you think of it? Yeah, I totally agree. I said their defence, which we highlight as their weakness, was never really tested. But I still think they're potential winners of this tournament. Uh, I think... They get found out over a league season, over 38 games, but now they're into the, the knockout stages, which they've done wonderfully well to get through to. But over two legs, they can beat anyone. Um, you see what they can do in, in 20 minutes at Anfield. We've touch, watched a couple of games this season. They just steamroll teams with their energy, with the, the Fab Fours, we keep calling them. And I said, over two legs, Real Madrid, Barca, I think they could do anyone. I honestly do. Would you go with that, Liam? Yeah. Uh, I think there's a few English teams, maybe all of them, have a have a real good chance this year in the in the Champions League. But uh, uh, they're special going forward. There's no doubt about that. Obviously, they're going to come up against bigger tests, uh, and their defence has got to be able to handle it. But tonight they were just awesome. It was great to watch. And uh, there is time now, I suppose, the, the the window coming up in January for him to bolster that defence, and if yeah. the money's there. Well, he'd need to do a bit of bolstering. He needs a new goalkeeper, uh, just a quality goalkeeper. He needs two central defenders, uh, at least. And that's quite a bit of money these days. You know, have to find them. I mean, Atletico, Madrid, for example, have a young guy called Jimenez, who's a Uruguayan, played at Chelsea last night. You might get someone like him. Uh, Godin, yeah. uh, Atletico Madrid again. You know, he changed that team. Uh, but I don't know if he can get the money from uh, whoever runs Liverpool. Uh, and without the money, he's not going to get the players. Well, right? well Emery Chan certainly not having any uh, talk of uh, them as potential winners at this stage. Just go game to game. But there was a point, Eamon, um, that was made to him there by Tony about scoring at the right time. They scored early in the first half, yeah. which got rid of the nerves. And then early in the second half, when some people might have been thinking about 3-0, yeah. dangerous scoreline for us. This was an important goal from Mane after... 47 minutes. Yeah, it's a great goal. Um, Milner just come on, I think, and it's a beautiful cross. Watch Mane. He, he times his run. He doesn't go herring into the box. He, he, he just takes his time, times his run and gets there perfectly. It's an amazing shot and it comes off the side of his foot. It's a great goal. Absolutely superb goal. Keeper's got no chance. Uh, and that's the kind of thing that happens when you're four up. Uh, whether he could do it against Everton uh, on Saturday, we'll see. But uh, the opposition has to be factored in. They were terrible. And the two lads think uh, Liverpool can win it. They can't. Can't win it with a bad defence. And they have a really bad defence. Even over the two legs, the point that Damien made? No, no, I don't think so, Damien. 
and, and Liam, I don't like to fight with these titans, <laughs> but uh, I don't want to delude Liverpool fans out there, some of whom are very close to me. Liverpool won't win the Champions League because they don't have a defence. But how far do you think they can go then? Well, that's a good point. I mean, the draw is important. Mm. You might get a cosy draw. Leicester got to the quarter-final last year. But I do think from here on in, you're playing better teams who are going to ask questions of your defence. And if you, if you can't answer those questions, you're not going very far. OK. Um, Coutinho, Damien, completed his hat-trick three minutes after Mane with the fourth goal. This was number five, and, and he had a sensational night. Yeah, man, the match, no doubt. Outrageous piece of skill um, out in the touchline. He mostly played on the left all night. A uh, little bounce into Firmino. Milner did well when he came on, and he deserved this, this piece of luck. Yeah, slight defection, but it was on target. But, um, listen, it's interesting reading the clock today. He can't guarantee that he'll be there in January, which is strange. Uh, we don't know what's going on in the background. Uh, Liverpool fans, even myself, you want to see him in the Premier League, mm. so hopefully he is there. But so it was strange from Klopp today saying that. Yeah, we're going to come back to that. Let's look at goal number six, Liam. Manny again. This was with 15 minutes to go. Yeah, uh, he missed a couple in the first half, but he got his chances and he took them in the second half. And it's a little combination that uh, Sturridge manages just to stay onside. And he did well to reach back with his right foot there and drag the ball over the goalkeeper so uh, you know, he he like the other three lads there's uh, the movement they combine well uh, just terrific to watch and you know I'm looking at the teams they could get and nobody's gonna fancy playing against that attack so if you score enough goals you can go through and that's what I will say to you Eamon that's what Klopp's Philosophy yeah. is score more than the opposition. Okay, uh, and they certainly ran riot this evening. Uh, one of the, I suppose, the guy who deserved a goal more than anybody else with the way he played, Salah, four minutes from the end. Yeah, and he's an amazing seven, player. Yeah. He's, very, he's having a wonderful season, uh, and he's going to be, I think, African Player of the Year or something. He might be the British Footballer of the Year, the way he's going. Uh, he really is scoring goals for fun, and he's well balanced, and he makes goals. And as Damien pointed out before the match, he makes very, very intelligent runs uh, in the gullies where it's hard to pick him up. No one knows who to pick him up. His full back can't go with him because he's not an, uh, an out-and-out winger. So he, he's been one of the revelations of the season. Uh, and it, it's amazing to think that uh, Mourinho had him at Chelsea, let him go. Mm. Mourinho also had De Bruyne, who's playing really well for Manchester City, let him go. The point being that, you know, even the greatest coaches can make mistakes, big mistakes. Um, Coutinho, Liam, and, and as Damien alluded to, I suppose over the next while now, that the, the talk and the speculation about his future will continue because of those comments from Jurgen Klopp where he couldn't guarantee whether Coutinho would be at the club or not, which as Damien said was, was strange. He was asked the question, he gave an answer. Um, he said he wanted to continue to just think about the game that was in front of them, which was this thing tonight. His performance, though, this evening, um, uh, again, and look, you, you make the comment about the opposition, but he, he was absolutely sensational. Yeah, he had loads of space, Dara. But, you know, if you give this lad space, he's, he's tremendous. This was uh, his part in the first goal, you know, it was a stupid uh, penalty, uh, but he took it away well. Watch this ball into... Uh, Mane there, you know, he was doing that all night and you can see he has everything this lad, maybe not defensively, he's not what you would want from a midfield player but he can spread the play and you can see why Barcelona would really want a player like this because since Xavi has gone from their team, um, who was part of that great Barcelona side, they haven't really replaced him. But this guy's got everything, and as Damien said, watch this turn here. You know, you can see him in a Barcelona team, and I think the, the president of Barcelona can see him very, very well linking up with the likes of Messi, with the likes of Suarez. And that's why they might go for him big in the window in, mm. in January. Now, it's business is business, so especially for Eamon spoke to us earlier on about the owners of Liverpool. Uh, if by keeping Coutinho his value is going to go down as this contract is, uh, is getting nearer to running out, uh, they might think, well, we'll cash in at the very highest price because he's one of the best midfield players there is in it, the world. Well, there'd be an issue for Barcelona if they did something in January. I think he'd be cup-tied in this, but 
uh, like the other point that's been made about it, Eamon, is if, if Barcelona were to wait until the summer and this guy has an amazing World Cup, the price rises from 100 million. Yeah, it goes I, up even more. Yeah, I think they'll go for him. They they need him now. Barcelona are top. Yeah, they're top of La Liga, but they're not playing well. Uh, they have Delafeo playing. Uh, Paulinho, who was at Spurs and Brazil, he's not a, not a player at all. Delafeo couldn't get in the Everton team last year. So Barcelona are badly in need of uh, of talent and game changing talent. That's what Coutinho gives you. And remember, they lost Neymar in the summer for mm. two hundred million. So they've got money to. To spend, all right. And there aren't many players in Europe that you could target, are there? Well, what, what, do you, what do you think about this? Like, but Can you see him fitting in the Barcelona side, Damien? <laughs> <laughs> it it wouldn't I be hard, really. No. I agree. No. I think they need a bit of X factor, and that's strange saying that with Messi there. But Suarez's star for me is fading at the minute. The names that Eamon has uh, mentioned, then Bailey, who they bought for big money's injured. And they're going to have to, you say, if he has a good World Cup, I think they need to add 50 onto it now. Um, mm. And Mbappe. I know he hasn't officially signed yet. That's 200 odd. Neymar was two, and that was at the end of the window. So if he goes now, um, but I that's think the difficulty. That's the that, difficulty for Klopp, isn't it? It's well, not well, really fair. For you know, Liverpool, he's if he built, goes, uh, he, he 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 inherited. They got they got this they lad from million, in, in, Inter they? Milan, sold him for eight million. The people who made that decision at Inter Milan must be driving themselves crazy. <laughs> but uh, fair play to Brendan Rodgers. It was him that brought him to Anfield. But Klopp has knitted together those four players. He got rid of Ben Teke. He was too static, too slow for him. Sturridge was dropped to the bench and he's put these four guys together and they combine brilliantly. And they combine like Barcelona combine on, at the very best. And you can see why Barcelona are looking at him playing saying, we want him to take the place of Xavi, to fill the boots of Iniesta. He's exactly what we need. But they were determined, Damon, in the summer, and they did manage to hold on to him. But yeah. they uh, uh, not quite moved heaven and earth. But it was like we're, we're not selling him under any circumstances. No. weren't their their kind of copies of the contract offer were leaked. Yeah. All this sort of stuff was going on. They, Liverpool will do the same again in January to keep him. They, they're trying to keep him because they don't want to fall out with their fans. They're American owners. The Liverpool fans are particularly passionate and have a real identity with their football club. Unlike say Manchester United fans, I think Liverpool is different. But Some Man United fans would argue different, well, but that's they just, may. okay. Well, but, you know, you, Liverpool fans are knowledgeable. They love that club. It's been through a lot. It's a long time sure. since they won the Premier League. And they've been through tragedies together, that community. And, and why I, would Klopp say something like that? Well, he no, can't I, guarantee or he doesn't know whether he's... I think he'd say going. it because I think the logic that Liam argued is right. Mm. I mean, if Fenway Sports can turn a profit of a, 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 an asset that costs eight million, into, into 150, 150 as I think Damien's right, you yeah. know, you can, you're talking about 150 million for a player of his quality, they'll do it. And it's bad, but that's the way business minds work. Mm. And football, at the end of the day, really isn't a business. If you sell Coutinho, if they sell Coutinho in January, they're taking the heart and soul out of that team. But in my opinion, not that he's, they're a one-man team, no. but that it's a sign to their fans and to their players, we're not driving forward, we're stationary or maybe going backwards. But if they had 200 million, say, to spend on several other players, is that what, the other what, side? But yeah, but you have a chance of winning the Champions yeah. League, but Damon doesn't think so, but Damon and I think so. With Coutinho in the team, you take him out of the team, I think the chances go. Mm. So they've got to give the Liverpool supporters that kind of encouragement. Yeah. If if at the end of the season they say to the Liverpool support, look, we just cannot keep this lad. He wants to go. We have to let him go. That means and Liverpool they get the are over as a yeah. big club. I mean, Liverpool is a club of Kenny Dalglish, uh, Ian Rush. Yeah, but were different times. Then, yeah, but they, they couldn't. You, no, I, I'm not I mean, saying you're wrong. I'm yeah. saying that you, what you're doing if you sell him, you're saying that we are not going to be aiming to be one of England's or Europe's great clubs again. This is a club that's won the Champions League five times. Mm. You know, and I think the economics of it are obvious, but the stuff that isn't obvious is more important. Keep him, make a statement, and go and get two or three good defenders, and we'll be the top club in Europe in the next two or three years. That's what the fans deserve to hear, and that's what they want to hear. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, but it's not going to happen.
<laughs> okay, well, we'll see. That's speculation about um, Coutinho. Well, uh, we've started it, but it's going to continue all the way up until the end of the January window, and it, it was in the papers this morning as well, so uh, we can't quite take credit for starting that. But uh, Barcelona will come knocking again. Perhaps others will see. But Liverpool have uh, cruised through to the last 16 as group winners. Now